So now let's get into putting some images together for our games. I'm going to start with Inkscape and put a character together and then we'll come back and do a background and do a 2D game and then we'll do a quick thing in Blender which I actually have a plugin so I'll probably use th that plugin and provide the link for it with just some models I've already built, some starter models to be quick and easy and there will be more detailed tutorials coming later. So for now just a quick getting started. So this is what we see when we open Inkscape. Uh, first thing we always want to do is set the document properties. So if we go to File and Document Properties, or you can see Control Shift D to get to it quickly, with this little setting. So we need to set our sizes and everything, and always change the units first. Change the units and then the numbers. So. We're going to be making game images, so obviously we want to measure things in pixels. Uh, we don't need any of the standard page paper sizes, so we can skip right over that. And for our custom size, I oh, want that to be in pixels. And I think for a character, uh, for a starter game, I'll do 64 by 64 tiles. And I'll make the character just a little bit bigger. I'll do a 64 by 128 character. Uh, slightly different than the tiles. So that gets our custom size set up. And then the other thing you want to check is the background. So I prefer the checkered background on transparent things. Uh, if you like the white one, just leave that box unchecked. But I like to see the checkered one if it's, uh, if it's transparent because sometimes I use white backgrounds. And then click the background color box and make sure alpha is set to zero. So alpha is the transparency. Make sure that's all the way down to zero or whatever level you want on it. Uh, for some projects, we might want, not want it completely transparent to make things look like they're glowing or something. But in general, we'll just be doing, for now, we're just going to do some solid colors above a transparent background. So make sure that alpha is at zero. Measuring in pixels, set the size. And this one up here, that's our ruler. So since we'll be working in pixels, we probably want our ruler to show pixels. That just makes things a lot easier. So we close that, we get this little window here. Um, probably want to zoom in on that. So we come up here, there's some options for zooming. The quick zoom is shift plus, the shift key and the plus key to get zoom in and shift key and minus to zoom out. And middle click will Middle click and drag will kind of adjust where you're looking at. So I'm going to kind of center that and zoom in. And maybe center it something like this. I guess. Right, there we go. So now we got a, our space to draw in and we have a border that we can see. So there's different shapes and things to work with. Uh, the quick start one is going to be to draw Bezier curves and straight lines. So I'm just going to draw some straight lines for now. So I'm just going to click on that tool, use the default setting for it. And I'm just going to start selecting points for it. So first off, I'm going to draw a head for the character. So I'll come up for a neck, come back around. And we can make this smoother. So make sure you, you want to give it lots of points. That way the smoothing operation will have much greater effect whenever you get around, whenever we do that. But I'm not going to do any smoothing just yet, just kind of um, a starting point. And we come back around, notice that it turned that into a shape. But we probably don't want just an outline shape. So I'm coming up to Object and Fill and Stroke to get all these options. And that should open a menu over here. There it is. So now we have some options for filling it or stroke patterns. Uh, so I don't want an outline. I'll fill it first. So we fill it and we can set our RGBA values or we can select from our list down here. Um, so that's a character's head. That looks like a skin color. I'll go with that. And then under the stroke tab, I'll turn that outline off. And now, so that gives us our character head. This tool's still active. So we can come in here and Notice it tried to snap right to that corner. So I'm going to snap right to the corner and draw a shirt for the character. So 
something like this. And this is a quick, easy version. Probably would really want more corners than that. Some modification points to adjust it later. We'll see a lot of that. So I'm going to turn the stroke off and set the fill to, oh, I'll put a red shirt on the character. That'll work. And the tool's still active. So come in and, again, just doing a quick start here. I'll draw a couple legs for the character. Well, control Z and notice that that first line I drew is still there. So uh, some sort of uh, one leg. Another leg, just hitting some key points here. I need to come out a little, something like that. And again, I'm going to turn the fill on and the stroke off, but I think I'll make these like blue jeans. There we go. Come in with some shoes. Uh, just some basic shapes for shoes. Make sure it snaps closed. And again, turn the stroke off, the fill on, and I'll just put some brown shoes. And another one over here. Snap into those corners to kind of fill everything in. Oh, and that's trying to snap. So I'm going to zoom in. Shift plus, zoom way in. That way I have more wiggle room with my mouse. And come over here somewhere. There we go. Zoom out a little. Middle click to get a good spot there. Yeah, it's still trying to snap, so I'm going to zoom way in so that I, it's like I have more wiggle room with the mouse that way. There we go. Fill in that shape. And again, turn the fill on, the stroke off, and it's still set to brown. Zoom back out, and there's our basic character. Oh, I'll put an arm on there. Uh, so somewhere around here. Come down, give the character a little arm. Just a starting point here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something to get started testing with, really. There we go. Turn the stroke off and fill it with that same skin color. I think it was that one. Yeah, that looks like a match. So now I'm going to go back to the selection tool. And the reason I chose this one is it's SVG graphics. Uh, well, I'll save it first. So we go file and save. And navigate to that image folder that was created in the with the stuff for our game here. Uh, I'll call this character. Yeah, I'll just call it character for now that'll work. And we have notice it's an SVG file. If I come over here, well, on mine, I set them up to open with the browser. But what I want to do is right click and maybe open with Sublime. Any of them, it doesn't matter. I guess I could use Notepad. Uh, I currently have notes for this video on Notepad showing on the other screen. That's why I chose Sublime. But you see, we have our scalable vector graphics. Uh, which are kind of nice to work with is we can, well, like the name says, scale them. They're scalable, they're adjustable, and they're all independent. So notice here in our editor, we can still go back and select just the head or just the shirt, even though it is behind this other, the arm here. So we can still work with the parts. That'll be important when we get to the skeletal animations. And along with that, uh, we can just export a ping to work with as well. Just a regular old image. So I'm going to box select all of these and kind of scale this to match this 64 by 128 space here. There we go. That kind of fills up that size I selected. And now we can come over to File and export a ping 
and we have different ways to export it. We can export a page, a drawing, just a select one single selection. Uh, for now, I'm going to do a, uh, export a, a drawing. Um, need to be measuring in pixels. And it tried to look at just the drawing, so I want to adjust that up back to the size I set it at, 64 by 128. And I'm going to make sure it kind of fills in the, the space nicely because in Pygame, we'll also be using this rectangle. Um, then set, choose where it exports to. Documents here in this folder. The image folder we have set up here. And I'm going to call this character. I always like to give them the same name. One's an SVG and one's a, a ping file. But that make it a little easier to keep track of them. Oh, yeah. Then we have to actually hit the export button. Once all those settings are there. Export it. And we have a ping file and an SVG file. Both of these we can use in Pygame, which we'll, we will see in the tutorial coming up very soon once we have maybe a background image to put behind it. So a ping file or an SVG file. And whoop, my browser's on the other window. My browser's on the other screen. I'm going to bring this in, uh, the SVG file. So uh, we have... That's what we'll be using for images, though with more detailed tutorials to come, but that's the quick start. Just grab the Bezier curve and straight line tool and start, choose your shapes, kind of like finger painting, and go to the fill and stroke men uh, menu, which will open the tools over here and kind of fill things in, add outlines if you want. And when you're finished, go to file, save it as a png or save it as an svg and then export a png now we have both of them to work with so that's our first image um i guess coming on 12 minutes so in the next video i'm going to do this uh a background a quick background thing in microsoft paint that i like to do see you in that video